Welcome to uh, part three of this tutorial for creating uh, VFX using camera tracks within DaVinci Resolve Fusion. And before we start with part three, actually, <laughs> I need to backtrack and uh, kind of revisit part two in Blender because uh, we did forget to put lighting and uh, shadows if you wanted. So let's go ahead and uh, add our HDRI. So first thing I'm going to do, we're back in Blender with our file where we left off and the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, get rid of these little markers so I'm just going to go to my markers over here and hide them all and then I'm going to go down here to our world and under our uh, color right here for our world I'm going to click the ye little uh, yellow button click the ye little yellow button and select environment texture so once I select environment texture I've got this little uh, menu system here and we can add our HDRI. So I'm going to select this, go to my uh, HDRI folder. And I happen to know that the uh, Belfast Sunset is probably the closest to this. If we were really doing this, we would go uh, make our own or uh, find a HDRI that matched our clouds. But uh, this one is close enough for this. So I'm just going to use the Belfast Sunset. So now our HDRI is in there. We can't see it because uh, just the way we have this set up. So if I go here and uncheck this transparent and uh, hit our little render button, you can see we've got our Belfast sunset there. But I need to rotate this so our sun is kind of where uh, our sun is in our actual scene. So to do that, I'm going to go to shader editor and I'm going to select world and I'm just going to uh, click on this and hit control T and it's going to pop up with our texture coordinates or a little mapping. And if it didn't do that, when you uh, hit control T, you have to have node wrangler in your uh, preferences set up. So you can just go to preferences and search for node wrangler. So node wrangler and make sure that's on. And if you do, you hit control T that'll automatically pop up. So in our coordinates here, um, I can translate on the Z and I can rotate our uh, little HDRI around till our sun is kind of where our sun is in our scene. And I'm actually going to rotate it on the X to bring it up. And uh, I personally just like flipping back and forth. So if I just flip back and forth to kind of see where our sun is, it's fairly close. I will bring it up a little more. And uh, on the actual world button right here, I'm going to uh, drop our uh, strength down just a little bit and double check. And that is fairly close. Go ahead and move that back over a little bit. There we go. So now we've got our sun. Now for the shadows, if you notice, our sun is over here and it's going to cast shadows this way. But our footage really isn't like that. In our real footage, our sun is actually over here on this side, casting this way. Because if you look at our trees, our shadows are actually going this way. They're not really coming from this direction correctly so me personally as small as these items are i wouldn't even bother really putting shadows in just the way the uh, scene is going to be set up the shadows really aren't going to make a difference but if you wanted to there's a few ways you could add your shadows back in so if we go to the 3d viewport and uh let's look at our scene one way and probably the easiest to do is when we imported our FBX, it came with a ground plane, but we deleted it out because I did not want to use that ground plane. So me personally, what I would do is uh, I would go ahead and make a new collection. And I would just name this temp because I'm going to delete it. And with this new collection selected, I'm going to go to file import FBX find our little scene and remember we need to scale it to 100 and import our FBX. 
So now we've got our FBX imported back in and all I want to do is I'm going to take this ground plane and I'm just going to move it up into my collection and then go to this temp folder, hide it, but then I'm going to uh, delete hierarchy. So it deletes all that out. But now we've got our original ground plane back in. So we can go here and I can rescale it. So it's covering our entire scene. And if we go under our object, go to visibility and select shadow catcher. Now we will render this one scene. It's going to render with those shadows and you can probably barely see them, but there are shadows in here. I can barely see them. But like I said, our shadows are kind of going down this way the direction of our lighting and this isn't really going to help us out in our uh, compositing scene because the shadows are going to be wrong. But like I said, I really don't care about our shadows. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and delete this. But if you wanted your shadows, that's how you would do your shadow catcher and you would export those out to uh, composite in your scene. So once we've got our lighting set up, all you want to do is go to render and render animation and re-render everything out. Once you uh, rendered out your EXR sequence, we can jump back into Fusion. So here we are back into Fusion with our uh, scene that we've been working on. And the first thing we can do is we can disconnect these uh, camera trackers and we can disconnect our little, uh, scene here from our camera tracker we can just put them off to the side you can delete them or keep them in case you need to redo anything so let's go ahead and uh, composite this stuff in and i want all this compositing to happen before this blurred area because if you remember this blurred area is our little uh, light wrap that's kind of like going on right here so i'm going to bring in a merge put it before that light wrap and then I'm going to hit shift space and bring in a loader node In our loader node. I'm going to double click and select our uh, little flex. So let's get some room to do some things to this. And then I'm going to connect this to the foreground of the merge. So now if we look at our media out, we've got our flags and they are the wrong size. Cause remember we export them at 50%. So they were smaller EXRs, but all we have to do is hit shift space and add a resize node and it'll automatically resize to our uh, composition settings up here. So now we've got our flags resized. So now if I hit play, you can see we've got our little flags blown in the wind. And as you can see, like I was talking about, these shadows are barely visible and they're going to be even less visible by the time we're done getting the uh, color and the look we want for this. So the only real thing I see that we're going to have to do is we could probably add a blur and uh, knock this down to like 0.5 just to soften them up a little bit. So they're not such hard CG elements in there. So that looks a little better. I'm not going to worry too much about grain, trying to match the grain of the original footage, because if we look in, there isn't, there's grain, but it's not, there's not tons. If we look at her black as opposed to this black, there's really not much difference and it's not too noticeable. If it, they were larger objects or different colors, maybe I would make sure I uh, match that grain correctly, zoomed in super close to see any uh, grain or pixelization that's going on and try to match that. But since there's not, I'm not too worried about it. The only thing I do see, which I may, is I see a little halation going on right here. So we can see this little white strip that's next to her and we don't have that on ours. So we could hit shift space and add a halation node 
and see if we could try to dial something in. But these elements are so small, we may or may not get the look we're looking for. And I can already see we're getting a little bit of whiteness there. But we could play with our threshold to try to bring it out a little more. But you just got to watch for thin items like this. It could uh, change your coloring. Because if I uh, go here, we start changing our threshold, changing our strength. We can see those colors are changing a little bit in the thin areas. Not much. But enough to where we uh, might want to worry about it. So that looks about good right there. So let's dial that down a little bit. And it's a little too much, so we're going to drop it, drop this threshold down. And there we go. And there's really not much else I want to do to composite these in. So the next thing we want to do is maybe work on color. And I think I'm going to add after here before our media out. I'm going to add a uh, color tone diffuser. And this is a pretty cool effect. Because there is a uh, setting on here that I already know I think I kind of want for the look. If I go up here and look at our presets, I'm going to go ahead and pick comfy couch. And this is kind of the look I'm looking for. So kind of a deep washed out fuzzy look. So let's jump in here and I'm going to go to our uh, diffusion and our shadow. And maybe change our diffusion amount a little bit. And on our shadow clip, I might change that threshold down a little because what I'm looking at is this right here and uh, if I turn it on and off you can see what it's doing to our highlights and shadows on her uh, little cloth here so I might just knock this threshold down a tiny bit so it's not so prevalent and let's see how that looks Not bad. Then one other thing I want to do is I want to bring some of these uh, details back in, but kind of monitor some of them. And if you remember, we went over the, uh, the detail recovery node the other day, and that's exactly what I want to use. So I'm going to bring this in, this in, and put that into our output. And uh, let's make sure we got the right one. And that's the one we want. Input one to input two. If we go to our detail recovery, we can start playing with our detail recovery here. Start getting the look we want. So we're going to bring this down a little bit. Change our balance. Drop our strength a little bit. And change our mix. If I need to preview what's going on, I can preview. And that's kind of the look I'm looking for. So if we look at our uh, original footage, we went from this to this. And I might even, uh, after this one, add a uh, color corrector node. Bring that gain down a little bit. Lift our gamma a tiny. There we go. So, from our original footage of kind of boring nothingness to this footage. So now we've got a look in, we can uh, go ahead and backtrack and do this uh, studio version only stuff, which is adding our little smoke behind our actress. 
and I do just remember detail recovery is a studio version only. So sorry guys, I forgot to mention that, <laughs> but uh, there's ways to still get this look without detail recovery. But let's go ahead and start building our smoke on our actress. So I'm just going to uh, copy her, paste the original footage. So now we've got the original. And after this, I'm going to add an optical flow. And uh, actually, let's go ahead and minimize this first. So let's get rid of that. After our optical flow, let's add a crop node. And on our crop node, let's go ahead and uh, crop this in so we don't have as much info going on. So I'm going to select this and I'm just going to kind of get around our actress here, wherever this smoke might go. So now we've got our cropped. I'm going to copy this, paste it and uh, input it in. And on this crop, I'm going to go back to 3840 by 2160. And uh, I'm going to opposite any numbers. So this is going to be 30 and zero is zero. So she's back in the original location. Now in between these crops, this is where we're going to do our little optical flow stuff. So we're going to input the optical flow. And if we look at our channels, now we have vector information going on. So let's go back to color. After optical flow, I'm going to uh, add a vector warp. And on our vector warp node, I'm going to just uh, generate a warp. I'm going to copy this, paste it on this one. I'm going to uh, select apply warp and map. So I can go ahead and apply that. So, and the reason I'm doing it this way is because uh, we can do multiple things. So if we want to add another one, we can just come off to this, to another vector warp to apply a different smoke. So that we're, way we're not uh, overburdening our uh, computer using multiple optical flows and warping. So on this one right here, we're going to go ahead and add our smoke. So let's get our smoke X set, which is a uh, smoke wisp. So we've got our smoke wisp. I'm going to add a lumic here. So now we're keyed off, but I want the smoke to be nice and black. So I'm going to add a background input this into our background mask. So now we've got black smoke. And then after this, I'm going to need a uh, transform. So I'll just go ahead and add it. And this is what we're going to input into our vector warp. So now if I look at our vector warp, we've got our smoke, but we need to get our smoke in position. So let's go ahead and make sure we're on our transform node and we can transform our smoke. So it has uh, just kind of sitting on her and kind of flowing off a little bit. Might reduce that scale a tiny bit. Bring that back in. So now if we grab a merge, we can uh, add a merge before all of our color information. And uh, let's change that. We're going to go from our crop right here into our merge. And then our vector warp, we just want to make sure we uncheck this merge warp over background. So we only have our smoke. So now if we look at our final output, we've got a smoke. So we've got some smoke wisping behind her. And there we go. So we went from uh, this kind of boring footage to this a little more exciting footage. And uh, of course you can add more layers of smoke to have it a little thicker coming off of her if you want. So. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I will see you guys in the next tutorial or the next node breakdown.